watching Thrifty Kniffy. Hello everyone and welcome to Thrifty Kniffy. Well, I have a couple of sticker shout outs to give you guys before we get into the review. So let's take a look at this. This is Boston Blade Review sticker. Great channel over there. Um, he does a happy hour live chat each week at 5.30 p.m. Central Time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time with Big J's Knives. Uh, so make sure you're checking out that live chat each week. And he does a ton of buck reviews, big buck knife lover. Uh, he frequently did a, well, just recently he did a video where he went into his local shop. And that's a must-see video. Really, really cool shop that he's got near his house. And he uh, took a little tour of that. So make sure you check that out if you're a buck fan. And if you uh, live in the UK or you enjoy UK channels, we have Sussex EDC over here on the right. He provided a couple stickers for me, and I appreciate that. Uh, you've got your stickers coming to you, Sussex. But fairly new channel. Got about 300 subs now. He's moving his way up. Does a lot of EDC stuff and knife reviews as well. So make sure you go check out Sussex EDC. All right, so let's get into the review. We have got today the Rosecraft Blades Beaver Creek Barlow. Comes in this style box. Got the logo there on the front. Website on the side. A little sticker on the bottom here giving us the model number RCT006, the Beaver Creek Barlow. So let's slide this open and see what we get. Now the knife comes packaged in some wrap, but here it is inside the, the liner. A nice foam liner there to hold it in place. And we're looking at, of course, the Beaver Creek Barlow. So this is, even with the satin finish thing, is something of a fingerprint magnet. So I apologize for all the fingerprints on here. But we have a three and a half inch closed length. You got those orange smooth bone handles. Of course, uh, Rosecraft is marketing them as bourbon bone. Kind of give it a more exotic appeal. But let's just be frank. They're just orange smooth bone. You've got steel liners on this with a single thread there. And then the RC etching for Rosecraft. Calling this the uh, the locking RC logo. So there you have that. Maybe to get a better idea if you can't see it with all the glare. It's just basically this. And it's etched in there. Now, when I bought this, I thought it was going to be stamped, so I was a little disappointed in that. I think that would have made it a little classier, would have uh, given it a little better appeal, but nonetheless, it's not bad. And the bone is very, very well smoothed out. Handles are rounded over. Got good transitions here. Pins are nicely <clears throat> filed down. So we have a very good fit and finish on the handle on that side and then if we flip it over you can see we've got really good color matching pretty consistent on both sides no uh, RC on this side just plain and just the brushed finish on the, on the steel liners there or the steel bolsters there we do have steel liners and as you can see those are on the back and really very little uh, in the way of gapping or anything like that. There is a little bit of a step down on the spring here at the bolster in the closed position, but very, very minor. Again, good finish and good fit. No uh, rough edges along the front edge of the bolster there, nor at the back here. The, uh, the blade's tucked in there nice. You're not having any problem with that poking you. Elbow, yeah, that's a little sharp. I might roll that just ever so slightly to give it a, a little less of an edge there. But overall, looks pretty nice. Very well designed knife. This, of course, designed by Andy Armstrong over at Rosecraft Blades. We've got a 2.7 millimeter blade stock on this guy. And we do have half stops. There's a look at that sheep's foot blade. They're calling it a sheep's foot. Mm. If we're being technical, it's probably a ram, so it does kind of widen slightly at the 
at the uh, end here. Another unique feature about this particular knife is generally one of those have a sheep's foot it is actually flat but you can see how that rolls up about three quarters of an inch from the tip so it does have a little bit of a belly there just ever so slightly so that's a nice little feature and then you've got the swedging there which Andy loves to use some have told me previously that uh, they thought they overdid the swedge I'll kind of just let you guys to decide I don't think it's bad I think it just kind of disguises the uh, the lines of the knife a little bit, makes it look more, you know, angular. Um, and a sheep's foot's a tractor blade, so I don't know why you would need to uh, kind of make that much of a a swedge at the end there. But you can see that that does affect the blade and geometry a little bit. The end, maybe it makes it a little easier to get through things there at about the last three quarter inches but in any case flat ground otherwise and you have the china sticker there that can be removed I didn't do that because I just wanted you guys to be able to see what that looks like out of the box on this side of the knife you've got Andy's logo there and then it's D2 steel RCT which stands for Rosecraft traditional and this is model number six essentially but a uh, good blade grind on that, pretty even. Pretty happy with that. Nice satin finish on the blades. Again, these are D2 steel. So you're getting, you know, decent steel on these traditional knives. Now this is going to be a premium review because it's over the $50 mark. Comes in at $55. I got this off of Rosecraft's site. Um, you can save 10% if you use Big Red EDC, the discount code. So that'll help you out with like the shipping. There's a look at the RCB tank stamp. Pretty attractive. Just says RCB and then Rosecraft and underneath blades. Again, it's very much like the etching on the locking RC on the bolster. Similar style. How they've put that on there so should be interesting to see how well how durable that will be over time that'll hold up but I'm pretty happy with the blade grind uh, the blade shape is very attractive to me uh, I don't know how I feel about the swedge it's sort of I uh, could have done without it but it doesn't bug me so much that I dislike it uh, I just feel like every knife you get from Andy isn't like almost required to have a swedge so it'll be interesting to see if he ever releases one in the future without one. But uh, again, you got the wonderful uh, fit and finish on this. Uh, the edginess inside the liners is nice. You can see that blade down there, the top down view there. They do just use the, the stainless liners. Now I'm more of a fan of the brass. I like the contrast and color. But I know from interviews that Andy prefers the stainless steel to have all one uniform color. I guess across the the width of the the handle there, but uh, feels comfortable in the hand. Uh, a little bit slippery, you know. I've oiled this a little bit, so maybe that isn't helping any. But um, yeah, it's it's doesn't have the grip you might have from a modern style knife. But you have very good blade action on it, very good pull. Thinking that's probably right about a seven on the pull. Um, positive lock up to the half position and then to the full open position and I'll shut up and let you guys listen so very happy with the action on the blade and I feel like uh, this is give you a lot of confidence and use not gonna lock up on you without something really stupid going on there so you could definitely use it as a work knife and uh, very classy all to boot but just very happy to be able to have a traditional Barlow available um, there just isn't a whole ton that are affordable you get into the bokers they get pretty darn expensive uh, yeah it is in the premium realm now that it's above the $50 mark very similar to um, you know of course with good reason the Rough Rider Reserve line 
and usually their single bladed knives have been under that $50 mark but they never had the natural material handle so I don't know if that's necessarily worth the premium but maybe that is the excuse for uh, the, the price increase but I'm hoping that uh, in the future uh, it doesn't creep up too much higher uh, the other uh, Lusahachi was over $50 as well so there you have that so yeah well you're gonna have to pay a little more um, looking like inflation's kinda taken taken hold and uh, it's no longer gonna be under that $50 price point but I do like the knife I feel like uh, it's still good value it's hard to find uh, a knife of this quality for that price and you're generally looking at three figures until you get into something like that so it's nearly half of that and based on the prices of other knives I suppose it's still a pretty good value but that's going to do it for my review guys I hope you enjoyed it make sure you like subscribe hit the bell to be made aware of videos when they drop we'll see you next time take care